for most people, when they see a train go by, their thoughts usually center around hoping that it doesn't block the road crossing for very long. Long and slow trains like this one are often an annoyance to the public. But for railroad professionals, there's usually a reason that the train is slow, and in this case, it's deteriorated track. This particular part of the railroad line had until recently only seen a couple of trains a day, and slow trains weren't much of a problem, but this had changed recently. This railroad track was due for an upgrade, and this is the story of what took place. Indiana Railroad is a 106 mile long short line that operates over the one time Indianapolis, Indiana to Louisville, Kentucky main line of the Pennsylvania Railroad. The LNI takes pride in giving online shippers exceptional service for their cargo. But when the LNI purchased the line from Conrail in 1991, it was 106 miles of mostly jointed 25 mile per hour rail. The railroad was able to live with this situation until CSX approached the LNI about using its railroad to host numerous trains for the big class one railroad. In 2015, CSX entered into a permanent easement agreement with the LNI, which essentially turned the line into two railroads. One, where the Louisville and Indiana continued to be a short line serving its local customers, and CSX in turn had a through main line for its trains in an effort to bypass Cincinnati and relieve congestion there. But there was the problem of the 25 mile per hour track. Not only did it limit the number of trains that CSX could run over the railroad in a day, it also precluded the use of 236,000 pound freight cars, today's industry standard. The solution was a $90 million project to rebuild the LNI literally from the ground up, replacing the 1930s jointed rail with 136 pound welded rail, which would allow for the heavier cars and higher speeds. Also upgraded was the northern four miles of track that was still owned by CSX. Let's take a look at this fascinating process that was recorded over the summer of 2017. We are at the extreme southern part of Indianapolis as a southbound Louisville and Indiana train is delivering continuous welded rail to be laid at this location.
This 136 pound rail was manufactured by Steel Dynamics and welded into quarter mile long segments at the factory and loaded onto this special train for delivery. Once at the work site, the rail is unloaded from the train. As soon as a section of rail is unloaded from one level, it's bolted to a rail on the next one. Welding the two sections together will happen much later in the process.
gone a couple of miles south to Greenwood, and one can now see a nearly empty train, giving an indication as to how much steel a railroad requires. We've moved north and are in Southport, Indiana, where we see undercutting going on. Over time, rock ballast wears down and no longer drains properly and is often pulverized to the point that it ceases to exist. Dirt and other debris work their way into the ballast, which also impedes drainage. The situation can worsen until a section of line deteriorates and has permanent slow orders. This section of track is getting a subtrack cleaning before any further work is done. Obviously, this railroad can't support the passage of freight trains, so they will lay fresh rock ballast and lots of it. Here we see a ballast regulator manicuring the track so that trains can pass through here this evening under slow orders.
A few days later, we're a couple of miles south in Greenwood. Here we see a tamper and ballast regulator working in tandem. It's the tamper's job to level the track by putting the correct amount of ballast under the ties. This contraption being pushed by the tamper emits a beam of light that receivers on the tamper capture and are used by the operator to make sure that the track is level. The tamper works by lifting the track a couple of inches, then inserting ballast. The ballast is squeezed under the ties to a specific pressure, then the track is lowered and is level. The ballast regulator and track sweeper follows the tamper. Its job is to manicure the ballast for proper drainage and to sweep the track clear of rock. This will be the first of several such treatments for this track. The track work took several months and the job was to have the track in shape for regular trains, even though more of this would be done as part of installing the welded rail. A month has passed, and now it's time to replace the jointed rail with the welded one. Here we see a spike puller lifting the spikes out of the old rail. Once the spikes are pulled, the joint bars are unbolted, one person for each side of the track. Next, someone follows along knocking the bolts out of the joints. Now it's time to remove the old rail itself. A large magnet first gathers the spikes together, then lifts up the rail itself. This rail served the Pennsylvania Railroad, then the Penn Central and Conrail, and now the Louisville and Indiana. But time marches on and its day is done. Next, 
the ties are painted where the edge of the anchor plates will go. Following along, we see a track sweeper clearing the ties of rock and other debris that could interfere with the anchor plates or the rail itself. Now we see them positioning the anchor plates to be ready for the rail. The quarter mile lengths of welded rail are now lowered into position. The rail sections will be joined using flash butt welding. Here we see the oxide being removed from the side of the rail so that the welding machine will have good electrical contact. The welding crew make sure that the rails are in perfect alignment before the welding machine is secured.
Flash butt welding runs high current through the rails such that it will arc across the gap between two pieces of rail. The high temperature of the arc literally melts the ends of the rail together. Once the process is complete, what were two sections of rail is now one. After welding, a spiker immediately secures the track. There will be more spikes later. Next comes the rail heater, which warms the rail to 95 degrees which is the proper temperature to anchor the track to deal with future rail expansion and contraction. Following the heater is the anchor machine that both places and squeezes the anchor clips in place. The clips keep the rail from moving lengthwise along the ties. Now the spikers can secure the rails. All of this track work leaves many discarded items. Here we see the rail being gathered and placed in a pile for later removal. We're back in Southport as more work is being done underneath the newly laid rail. We're in the final push to finish the job. This section of track is seeing tie removal and replacement today. Here we see a spike puller and an on-track material machine running ahead of the tie gang. The spike remover is taking the spikes out of the ties to be replaced. The OTM machine uses these magnetic belts to remove the pulled spikes, clips, anchors, and other metal debris from the roadbed. Today, this section of track is receiving many new ties. Before the new ties can be installed, the tie remover extracts the worn ones.
Now that the old ties are gone, a tie crane positions the new ones for installation. Next, a tie inserter completes the tie changeout. Following the tie inserter is a track sweeper cleaning the ties of rock. Now that the ties are clear, we see workers using a track lifter to give enough clearance to insert the anchor plates. There is one track lifter and operator for each side of the track. As we look down the tracks, we see what a large operation that this is. Now that the new ties are in, a spiker secures the rails. Following the spiker, the anchor clips are tightened at the new ties. We're in the final stages of surfacing. A half mile down the track, we see the tamper making final adjustments to the ballast and leveling of the track. Behind the tamper, we see the ballast regulator and track sweeper putting the final contours on the roadbed to enable proper water drainage away from the railroad.
Now that the track work is done, the crossing lights and gates need to be tested since they have been retimed for the new 49 mile per hour speeds. The track upgrade may have been a long and involved process, but the success of it is demonstrated here as CSX train Q216 is making good time on its run from Louisville to Philadelphia. The welded rail enabled CSX to run more trains and the Louisville and Indiana to offer better service. Good track makes all the difference.